living, living full and well and well and well life is put together. Authentic. We feel it. Take care, Take care of ourselves. ourselves. Hello, and welcome back to the Wishing You Well podcast, where we share and hear stories from others about navigating our own unique wellness journeys. I'm Amy Albero. And I'm Catherine Van Eyck. We're both licensed therapists. And on this episode of Wishing You Well, we're discussing careers. We'll be chatting about our experiences in changing jobs and careers. We'll talk about how we knew we needed to make a change, what's important to us when it comes to our careers, what we're passionate about, and how it all relates to our overall well-being, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Um, I know I say this every week, but like a lot to talk about here. Um <laughs> a lot to unpack a lot to unpack um and and we will we'll get to it um but we have to start out with our with our self-care check-in of course um so what is your self-care looking like this week okay i was really looking forward to talking about this because i feel like my self-care was really self-caring for a really long time like I think I was really fortunate in my postpartum experience because I had a really support, have, still have a very supportive husband, very supportive support system in general. And um, so I, I, I was doing pelvic floor physical therapy. I was doing this like one-on-one -on -one yoga that was like also helping and getting my body, not, not, not like back into shape, but like just really just like back to moving and like doing different movements that I hadn't been able to do in like nine plus months. So, um, those were just like two huge things that I've been doing for a long time that has since changed. So, you know, this, our listeners don't really, uh, but like I'm buying a house, which is really cool. <laughs> uh, but also, whoa, also big expense, <laughs> scary. And so I know that I need to make some other financial adjustments. So those things are not happening anymore, but also not, not just because of the financial shift in my life, but also because I'm at a different part in my postpartum journey. And so I don't need those anymore. Like I am like working out on my own. I'm, I'm feeling like myself. Um, and I just don't think I need those extra added cushions for, or not even, okay, I, I shouldn't call them cushions, but like Support. just those added, sorry. Supports? Yeah. Those added supports to my support system. Like I don't need them anymore. And I feel good about that. Like I've kind of like graduated, you know, but it was also like such a nice treat. And so I, I'm going to be missing out on that. And I just wanted to point that out because this isn't so much as like this isn't so much of like what I have planned because I, I think I still need to figure that out, but like, this is, this is a big shift. So uh, self-care is absolutely you know, making changes with that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's worth talking about because we go through big life changes, not all the time, but like we're, we are going through big life changes when those big life changes happen. And sometimes our self, our, our self-care has to evolve with it and has to, yeah. um, yeah. No, I'm absolutely. And, and I feel like it's such on theme, at least for my view of what we're going to be talking about on our episode today in that through life and in order to support our own well being, there are trade-offs, right? Like, and so there, there's like, of course, this huge, um, milestone, financial milestone, life milestone of buying a home, which is amazing and probably in so many ways will contribute to your well-being. Um, but with that means that, yes, yeah, certain things have to fall off or you need to adjust. And like that is life. And it would not be contributing to wellness to keep everything on the table um, as much as you might want it to. But there's time, money, energy, all of that stuff. We can't have it all all the time. And I think it's like knowing when to say when. Um, and, and, and which, which goal or priority is, is at the top of the list, like listening to that is really meaningful. And so I think, I think I'm really glad that you brought this up. It's so fitting, I think for today. No, you're right. It is. And, and I think it's also something that like, 
sometimes we just get so attached to things like attached to our routines, attached to certain self-care items that we look forward to every week or every day. And yeah, it's just not right. Not just not reality most of the time. Uh, and other than emphasizing self-care so much, like we are emphasizing the realities of self-care and that. Yeah. So I just wanted to highlight that how it's happening over here. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And, and I guess, and it's good for me as your co-host here to be aware of so that I can still check in and make sure self-care is happening. Um, even though it's going to look a little different, at least for the time being. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> um, so how about you? How how are you? How is your self-care? Yeah, I'm good. Um, I I met with a colleague today and she was like, Amy, you look so relaxed. I haven't seen you look this relaxed in a while. And I feel that way. Um, and a lot of that has to do with just, um, you know, my, my schedule clearing up quite a bit. But I had such a cup filling weekend that like it felt very restorative. So um, I guess along with that, I have a self-care update, which is I shared on a recent episode of the podcast that my self-care was around a like a fitness related goal that I had. And so I had the fitness event this weekend and it was amazing. Um, I, I met my goal. I crushed my goal actually, which I feel really good about. Um, what was your goal? So I wanted to finish the event in an hour or less. I had no idea if that was a reasonable, reasonable goal or not, but like what I kept hearing was like, you should be able to finish this in about the same amount of time as a regular class, which is 60 minutes. So I was like, all right, 60 minutes sounds good. And I finished in 46 minutes, which it, Whoa, which is good. And I, I was feeling a little judgmental of myself because I, you know, of course, didn't finish first. I that wasn't my my goal, but I was like kind of in the middle. And then when I was looking at the stats for my age range, I was not to not to make this <laughs> a braggy thing. I don't mean that, but it was more. It was so validating for me to see for my age range. In Miami, I finished um, first and for my age, I was like, well, our Miami studio is small. So I like compared my time to Stanford and I finished, would have finished second um, in, um, in my age range. And so I think that was That's amazing in terms of my expectations for myself and who I'm comparing myself to. And, um, but, but the thing about the event that was so cup filling was, um, it was really hard and really, really humbling. And there were, I think, 12 of us um, com like kind of doing this all at the same time. And toward the end, we're all like dog tired, so exhausted. And there were still people that were like finishing their run on the treadmill. It was a 5K that we had to complete. And so like once there were like a bunch of us had finished, there were still a couple of people remaining. And the whole entire team got back on the treadmill and and ran with them while they finished and like just kind of finishing this really hard thing together was really nice and seeing the way that like teamwork and community kind of like really do work it was just it was really nice it was something beautiful to be a part of and and while i had said last last time when we were talking about this it was um like a me versus me competition it like so became not about the competition and more about like what we did together. And that, that felt really nice. So. So cool. I mean, it sounds like you got so much more out of it than you had even intended. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And, and I think letting myself stay in like, Oh, this is good. I crushed my goal and not immediately go on to, okay, there's another one in the fall and I want to do even better next, like letting myself stay in like, oh, this, this is good. This was a, a good experience and I feel proud of myself. So that was like my big self-care um, thing that, that happened this week. Uh, good for you for sitting in it because already I was like, all right, Amy, when's the next one? <laughs> like I was already thinking I'm going to ask you. <laughs> It's hard. It's hard for me to stay in it. Um, mm -hmm. and again, you're a competitive person, so you get it. Yeah. It's like taking all of me to not like, no, um, I know it's sometime in the fall, okay. but so. And so, so remind me, it was a dry try yes. at, at Orange Theory. So it was 
5k on the treadmill what how much row um 2000 meter row um and 300 body weight reps so the 2000 meter reps of like uh yeah so it was okay um <laughs> It was um, 80 like hops over like um, a step box. It was um, 40 squats like with your butt touching the the box. Um, it was um, 40 like plank jacks. So you think you know what those are? Um, 40 push ups, 20 burpees, and 80 like step ups on the on the bench so it was a lot cardio crusher yeah oh so like at orange theory the whole thing is like you are like it it has your heart rate zones and like green zone is like you're in an active recovery state orange zone is like i don't know fat burning zone quote unquote and then red zone is like peak heart rate i the i took me 46 minutes i was in the orange and red zones for 43 minutes like the entire time i was mm -hmm. crushed crushed <laughs> so anyway it was it was hard humbling and felt really good so nice yeah. and and also just such a nice experience for you to have that community experience in mm -hmm. miami where you're new revives new in miami yes yeah. And that's like what I kept thinking about is the reason that I joined a gym to begin with was because I was looking for community and I felt like so affirmed that I had found it, um, over the weekend. So that was, that was nice. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. So that's, that's what's going on over here. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep you updated once I know the next, the next date. <laughs> But no, 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 don't listen to me. Continue sitting in this. Enjoy. <laughs> reap it. Yeah. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what's going on on my end. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Well, we will always check in with each other. We'll do it next time as we always, always do. Um, but for today, let's get into our topic. Yes, let's do it. Okay, so as you previewed for us at the at the top of our episode, we're talking about um, changing jobs and career. And I think, you know, a big reason that this had come up in our conversation is that given the work that we do, but also I think the life stage that we're in, like this is a topic that comes up a lot in our work with clients. I know this is something that's come up a lot just within my family, you know, um, siblings, cousins that are around the same age, um, like just comes up a lot in this, like, um, is it too late? When should I change careers? Like, what if I, what if I don't know anything? Like, what if I'm not successful? I don't have any skills. Um, you know, is this just what adulting is? Like, you know, there's so many, um, like questions that come up around career and career fulfillment and, um, and deciding if and when to, to shift a job or a career. And, and so we thought we have some some experience with that personally and professionally, but personally, and why not begin a conversation about, about that today? Yeah. And also just how it, like, as much as we hear about it and we, as much as we hear about it and we know that it's like a part of so many different areas of our lives, um, personally and professionally, like how it relates to your overall well being and, you're just overall how, how you're feeling, how, how your day to day is. And just also how the, the connection between what you're searching for and potentially making a career change and how present this can be in all, all the areas that you just mentioned, that connection to your overall well being is, is it's pretty there. <laughs> so, so we want to weave that in here. Um, I mean, and it's not hard to do, but we want to really emphasize here, how, like how, how much that change in your life or that potential change in your life can impact your, your, your wellness. For sure. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So we'll, we'll get into that for sure. But I, you have a unique, um, 
path as it relates to career. Um, can you, for our listeners who who don't know, um, can you share a little bit about your experience with kind of your career and how you've like landed where you are? Yeah, I mean, so I don't know if any of our listeners, unless like, hey, mom, have you ever seen it? Uh, any of my friends. Um, I don't know if anyone knows. Well, so I initially went to school for advertising and PR because I've always been really creative, really passionate about doing something creative. And then it was towards the end of college that I was like, I'm not excited about any of these jobs that come along with this. Like, I feel like this is not where I want to go in life. And then I I did some digging before graduating with a professor actually, who was really inspiring. And she helped me to figure out that it was really just because I didn't think I was going to get into anything meaningful or impactful. And so I was like, well, shit, like I'm, I'm kind of screwed here. Um, but, oh, well, like that would have been nice. And so I kept, so then I started looking for jobs in advertising and PR anyway, but like my heart just wasn't in it. And so then I also was kind of like, screw it. Let me look into what that would mean for me and how that would, how that would look in my own life. And so did some more digging, did some more research and realized that in college, some of the classes that I really was interested in was psychology, was interpersonal communications. And so then I you know, continued thinking about what that would mean. And, and then I found marriage and family therapy in that search and thought that being a therapist and namely at the time really just wanted to be a couples therapist and thought that that would be incredible. Like I was like, well, this, this is a career. This is so cool. Oh my gosh. So then I pushed forward with that, went to, went to grad school. Um, and then of course, in, through needing some clinical training, um, needed to find a site to do those hours and actually like learn to become a therapist. So even in that search, I got pretty discouraged because it seemed like you could just work at a number of different kinds of agencies. And that really wasn't what I found, like what would like got my heart beating and stuff. <laughs> so I also was like, okay, well, first of all, I went to school to try and find something that I really wanted to do here. Like I need to keep going with that. <laughs> So I stumbled upon Revive, which immediately caught my attention. And that also was because it molded together this other passion and, and, and interest of mine that I've always had, or maybe not always, but like for the last 10 years or like ending high school had really had an interest in health and wellness, like as a whole. And so when I stumbled upon Revive, I was like, oh my God, they're doing this here. They're, they're, they're bringing together health and wellness and therapy and like putting the two together and like in this way that seems unreal. Like this is so cool. <laughs> so you of course know also this, that I just was like, let me get in there. Let me, let me see if they'll have interns. Let me see if I can work there. And you were like, no. <laughs> we're not doing that. Um, but I just kept, you know, meddling my way in there and eventually you took me, um, not my way in there. Um, and I started working at this place that I felt like was such a dream. It, it was really bringing worlds of my passions together and then started working in, as a therapist at Revive. And then COVID happened and I like being at Revive so long really caught it, caught an understanding of like what it was about and like really just felt like I represented those values myself and really saw a need that wasn't being met. And it was really just like the social media. And so I then was like, Hey, Amy, can I, can I also like knock on that door a little bit? And so then full circle moment, it was like bringing together these three, like almost like three passions of my life of being able to be creative, focusing on health and wellness, being a therapist. It was just like a cornucopia <laughs> of a career creation. <laughs> and there, here we are. I mean, it really is full circle that in a lot of ways you, you did, you did 
you are end at this point. I mean, to say at an end point isn't fair because yep. your career is still in its you know beginning stages in a lot of ways. But um, that you're at this point where you you are almost where you started, but with that deeper sense of meaning or connection that you were looking for. And so it wasn't like you abandoned um, your um, your education and whatnot. It was it was that you like took a little bit of a detour to figure out like how to make meaning um, w with it in a way that like also aligned with your interests, your values, all of that stuff too. Yeah. And I, I mean, I don't think my experience is unique either in that I feel like in the, as a millennial, right? Like we were kind of that first generation that was like, I want to do something that like, isn't just sitting at a desk and like something meaningful and something that I'm really going to love. And I'm kind of like mocking it, even though like, I totally am such a hypocrite. Like I am that person that was like, I need to not sit at a desk all day. Mm -hmm. Um, I think like there's so many people out there that really yeah, like have, have, the same, if not as like a similar experience to mm -hmm. searching and searching and searching for that. Yeah. Quote unquote, perfect. Oh, for sure. Thing. And, and one thing that you, you alluded to this, but like, I don't, I mean, you didn't necessarily like give yourself such a pat on the back about it for, but one of the things that I, I think is also responsible for you having this trajectory was how much you advocated for yourself and um, how you put yourself out there. I mean, and, and, you know, Catherine's making light of when she kind of found revive and had this conversation with me, but she like really put herself out there in a way that was vulnerable, um, was assertive in a very appropriate way. And then she kept in contact with me um, and just kept following up again in a way that was, um, that was, totally appropriate. But for me, it was like, okay, she, from my end, I was like, oh, she sees something here that I don't, I don't even see yet. And she's someone that like has this level of passion and interest in this company. Like I want to make room for her. And so I think that there, and I felt that way the entire time that you've been here, like you, um, the way that you've kind of advocated or just like asked, like, and, and I think that if as a business owner, like, I've said to you and to all of you who work here, like I can only see like what's in my mind. Like I'm so limited by my view and my lens. Like there are definitely other things within this business that I don't even see as a possibility. So if there's something that you're interested in, let me know because there's probably an opportunity here that I'm not even seeing. And, um, and so you really took me up on that, like from the get go. And, um, and so I think you're such a good example of, um, again, like advocating for yourself and just like asking, asking for what you want. You have nothing to lose. Right. And, um, and that, I what do you, what ahead. do you, oh, first of all, thank you. And I appreciate that. Um, but like, what do you think it is about advocating for yourself or like actually like somebody going to their current job and like trying to carve out something that maybe doesn't exist just because they're interested in it? Like, what do you think it is about that? holds people back from putting themselves out there like that. Yeah, I think, well, A, it's, it's really vulnerable. And I think fear of rejection is, is a thing. I, I also wonder if, if in some way, I don't want to totally gender it, but I think that women tend to have a, a much more difficult time, again, being assertive in a, in a workplace or just in general, but um, like asking for what we want is, is really challenging. But I, I also think that people's again fear really limits them from coming up with like an idea or um like i'm thinking about at, at jobs that i've had where i've like sort of like wished on the sidelines that like oh i'd like really love to um do that or i feel like there's such a need here and like i wish i wish i i could do that but never put myself out there and i think it was like well what happens if they say no like what's that going to feel like? Will I be able to stay here if, um, if, if it doesn't work out, like all of that stuff. And so I feel like it feels safer to, to hold back. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like if I tell them I'm interested in this, are they going to think that I don't want this job and then they're going to just cut the lids? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, um, and I think like, I, I think another part of your, um, 
experience that relates to mine and my career too is like the importance of relationships as well. And, and not that I, I feel like you, you and I cultivated such a, such a positive uh, relationship and working relationship. And, um, and I think that allowed me to really get to know you and get to know your interests and get, and just like, get to see um, the ways that you could add such tremendous value to what it is that we do here. And, um, and I've had that same experience in my, in my career where I just like happened to really hit it off with my, with my supervisor and my boss at one point. And so we like got to talking about things that we felt really passionate about. And then a role was created with me in mind based on these conversations that, that we had been having similar to, um, your experience here. And, um, yeah, I mean, you're so right. I feel like people aren't, if, if they're, the conversation's not being had, then it's not leading anywhere. Like it's just an idea mm -hmm. at that point, mm -hmm. just like a, a hope or a wish and just like, it's kind of fleeting. Mm -hmm. But then once the conversation gets going, once like the juices start flowing, that's when the actual evolution of something could really like roll into something else. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and again, not, not all companies are, I mean, revive is a small business. So like it, it's, there's, there are definitely, um, there's more leeway in some ways than like in a big company, but like for me, like hearing what someone is passionate about and, and what energizes them energizes me. And like, and, and I feel like, again, I've been in, I've been in situations where my fear around like how this would be received has stopped me from even like dreaming or wanting to be creative and, and how, what a loss that, that is for myself and, and potentially for what, what ever, like that organization I was at could, could have done, you know? Yeah. Well, and I also think like, I, yeah, yes. Like revive is really special and like small business working in a small business is really special and like helpful in that. But I also think like I have friends and I've, have, I've had clients that work at big corporations who have had these kinds of conversations who have tried to, um, kind of like carved out a little niche in their workspace and, and it has worked and sometimes it hasn't. And, and then they they just keep pushing and keep pushing because sometimes you start working somewhere right out of college and you just sort of get pigeonholed into whatever it is that you entry leveled into. And then you, then like, like you said at the top of this episode, then you feel like there's nothing else I can do. Meanwhile, you might be interested in like, for instance, I have a, I have a friend who is really, really interested in video editing. And instead of just thinking like, okay, well, I only work with social media advertisers and like, uh, in, in marketing and there's no like space for me here to work in video editing, not in like the actual job description that she had. Instead, she just looked elsewhere. She like, not, not in terms of like finding another job because she was kind of feeling a little hopeless in that department because she didn't have the experience. So she went out and got the experience after hours doing video editing, doing sound editing, podcast editing. And then her job was like, oh, you do that? Mm -hmm. You're interested in that? Wow, that's really cool. Oh, you actually want to make this into part of your career? Okay. And they like created a whole job for her. And this is in corporate America. Like, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think like, it's not like you are sentenced to 50, 30, 50 years of the same thing. If that's not where you really see yourself, that doesn't mean that you can just sort of like figure it all out without putting in that work. Like she put in a ton of work outside of work mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, the, ability and the the potential is there. It's just a matter of how you're going to figure out how to get it in there, how to get in there and how to do it yourself. Sure. Yeah. She, it sounds like she was really resourceful and she kind of like wanted to take charge of her own, um, career future potentially. And, mm -hmm. and I think again, that takes sacrifice in, in order to do. Um, and, and I think when we get like toward the end and like, what, what do we do when, when we're, when we might want to make a pivot? Um, and, and I can kind of share some, some insights there and, and what I've, what I've done, what you've done, what I've learned from others, but it, it's really tough to do. And, um, and so I don't want to minimize 
that. Um, and, and I think, I think one of the, I'm, I'm thinking about your, your story and, and just the little you shared about your friend is that it's also not something that happens overnight. <laughs> and like, and so like, not only does it take effort and energy, but like, it takes patience and like a level of tenacity too to, to kind of make a shift in, in your career for the, for the most part. Um, it's, it's re really rare that like a kind of a perfect opportunity lands in your lap. Um, but it, you often have to kind of like figure out how to make the best of the situation that you're in. And I feel like that relates a lot to my, my experience in my career. Um, because yes. Share, share a little more, get into detail yeah. here. Yeah, sure. I mean, I know I've shared about, um, revive, but you know, the, uh, so I, I've always, like, there was never a question about like what I wanted to do essentially. Like I always knew I wanted to be a helper in some way, um, from when, when I was very young, um, and what that meant changed like throughout my adolescence. But like, I knew from when I was in college, I wanted to be a therapist. And, and so that, that part didn't change. Um, I graduated grad school in 2009 in the height of a recession. And so there weren't a lot of jobs out there and, um, the therapy world isn't what it is now. And so I just had to take whatever I, I got and it ended up being two part-time jobs in settings that I probably would have never picked, um, if I, if I felt like I had more of a choice, which I didn't. And so I feel like so much of my career for the first 10 years or so was out of necessity and necessity in like just having a job. And then as my husband and I got um, got more serious and started living together and, and talking about a future together, um, me having a job that had stability. Um, my husband worked at finance at the time and he worked in, um, he was a trader of mortgages and this was at the height of a recession and the mortgage crash. I don't even know if that's like the right terminology, by the way. Um, but that sounds, sounds accurate. And so yeah. there was so much, um, instability in terms of his career. And, um, and so he was, um, like having to shift, uh, companies. I mean, it felt like I, I, every year, year and a half, just given the instability of the market. And so like we had at that point made a, made a decision that like, because he had the potential to earn like a higher income than I did in finance. And I did as a therapist that I would be the one to kind of hold down the stability in terms of benefits and, um, just like having a steady paycheck. Um, and, so that he could have opportunities to kind of make more money. And what that meant was that I had to stay in jobs that like weren't ideal um, um, in pursuit of like us being able to have a better future. And so we did that for a long time. And so I had to kind of ride it out in these jobs that weren't great. And, um, and again, try to make the best of situations that, um, that, it, that I could. And then at the, at a certain point I was like, okay, so, um, we've been doing things in pursuit of your, my turn, it's literally in pursuit of your goals, um, for, for this time, like we, we need to shift. It's my turn. Um, and so he's, he's now the one in the steady, stable job with benefits and a nice predictable salary and all of that great stuff. And I'm the one that like gets to pursue, um, like more of my, my career and my, my dreams in that sense, and like have a little bit more flexibility and instability as I kind of build and grow this business. And, um, and so like the trade, speak trade-offs, that was the word I used at the top of the episode, but like the trade-offs that we've each had to make as it relates to our career. And my husband and I are both very career driven. Um, and so the, the trade-offs, the sacrifices that we've each had to make in pursuit of like the overall goal, which is our financial well-being, our just what we want for our future stability. And so that that's like been interwoven throughout my career um, for a really long time. And and I think that, you know, within those the last 15 years of my career, 
um, like I've been really trying to figure out, like I've moved around, like I've, I've had a number of jobs within the last, within my career. And, and I've always like really tried to figure out like, am I leaving because, um, like I, I really need to, because it need, it felt like it needed to be, I needed to make the right choice. I couldn't necessarily be just completely selfish in my decision. Cause I'm deciding something for two of us. Um, and so the, the moves had to be really strategic. And so, um, along the way, as I'm still in my therapy career, I had a client that said to me, um, relaying advice she got from someone in her industry, um, that with, within your work, like there are going to be periods where you are learning and that's like what you're there to do. You're there to learn, you're there to grow. And then there are going to be times where it's just about earning, earning a paycheck. And that's what it is. And I feel like, um, having that, idea in my mind was so helpful where I would be able to make a move knowing that this would give me more er, like earning potential. Um, or it would be a job where I could really learn and grow a ton and kind of use that to kind of propel me to a different level in, in my career or, or things like that. So I know I've kind of rambled on a bit, so I'm, I'll stop talking, but. Well, I, I mean, I think I, you you brought up a lot of great points in, I mean, first of all, I think it's great that you and I have two totally different stories. Mine was like straight out of school. And I, I was really like independent at the time. And I could make those independent decisions. Whereas when you were making those decisions, you had a, a spouse, a partner to think about. And, and I, I know that what can hold people back a lot of the times is that partnership or like a family, obviously when you're responsible for more than you, that making a career change isn't just like, mm, let me just do this thing and like have a good time, see what happens. I'll throw it all out there and see what comes back. That doesn't just happen for the, you know, 30, 40s, 50s year old, some things like that's, that's a pipe dream some of the times, or it's just like one in your youth, right? Where it's like when you're tied with somebody or you have, somebody is depending on you, then there's a lot more that goes into that decision. And you guys made this strategic decision to kind of just like take turns and that worked for you. And, and you, you really like stuck it out in, in places that you didn't want to be mm -hmm. at all or for any longer, mm -hmm. just for that reason, mm -hmm. that, that, that stability, obviously careers are meant to be stable, right? Like jobs, maybe not, not so much. Right. But like careers, they're meant to be stable. So when you actually made that shift into branching out and doing something out on your own, that was huge, huge. Yeah. A huge risk for sure. And, and I think that like in order for me to prepare for that risk, I kind of followed a similar path of your friend of like, okay, like, I know I don't want to be doing this forever, wh wherever, wh whatever the this was at the time. Um, like this, like this is, yeah, paying the bills and like giving us health insurance, <laughs> but like, this isn't, this isn't it. Like this can't be it. Um, and, and so I started a private practice on my own. Um, and, and so I had like a, an independent, very small private practice for like five years, five of the 10 years I was, um, prior to revive, like just to give myself something that felt like mine felt like I had a little bit more control of my future career wise and financially and to like get myself ready and prepared for like this bigger goal of mine of, of, you know, starting a, starting this business. And, um, and so that like, t again, took sacrifice. I was working nights and weekends. Um, but like that, it was kind of what I had to do in order to get, get myself to where I wanted to be. And I think that's like the unsexy, unglamorous part of, of career that like, people don't really talk about. Absolutely. Yeah. I, none, I, and I think like, I, I really glossed over and kind of made a very uplifting story out of mine too. But there were times where I was crying. There were times where I was just completely lost. And I remember, especially like the summer after I graduated college, feeling 
like I was like a disappointment to myself, a disappointment to my family that I didn't just like go get a job right away and just like go do it. And I, and my friends like comparing myself to like what they were doing, like I felt awful Mm -hmm. and it was months and months and months until I figured this out. And even then I was like, oh, I'd be so behind because I didn't like go to grad school right away or like, because now I'm going to grad school. And then like, there were so many, yeah, totally unsexy, totally like even more so just like dreadful, <laughs> absolutely dreadful parts of that experience mm-hmm. that were so important at the time. And like, I think I was able to gloss over it and make it so uplifting because now it's so great that I almost like those things were so out of sight, out of mind. Uh, but now that you bring them up, now they were, now I remember them. <laughs> no, no, it's good. I mean, like we're trying to paint a realistic picture here and I just made like this beautiful little painting for everybody and forgot about everything I ever put in ink and smudged and erased and like whited out and started on a blank canvas, mm-hmm. all of that. Mm-hmm. Like I totally left it out. So my bad. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate you kind of like circling back to that, like, (laughs) because I think that like, I think that when people do want to make a change and it's not like automatic or not easy or like not fun or fulfilling, like that's when people feel like, oh shit, I'm doing this wrong or I should just give up. Um, and so like, I don't think either of us are saying like, there's a guarantee if you stick it out, it will work out, but there's a high probability that like making any sort of change is going to suck a little bit. Um, and, and you can give yourself the, the possibility of seeing what what's on the other side, but like, you won't know, like, mm-hmm. unless you do. And, and I think that's, that's also part of the reason I think people shy away from it is like the unknown of, yeah, you can do all this work. You could put yourself out there and, and you don't really know what the outcome's going to be. It could be great or and or it could be completely different than what you were initially seeking. Right. Well, and and there's that idea too, like, I don't know what I'm going to put myself out there for, mm-hmm. like, other than my myself, like, what am I actually doing? Like, I'm unhappy, but what else do I do? There's that. (laughs) Yeah, right. Well, I think the other piece is like, (laughs) I don't know, coming from a therapist, I don't know how this is going to sound, but like how much, how much unhappiness in a job is reasonable and to be expected and how much unhappiness is too much unhappiness? Like, you know, that's a really great point because I think I had this whole, this whole, um, not, not even just session, but sessions with one, with one client in particular who was in a similar position of not wanting, of, of, of wanting to change careers, uh, but not knowing what, what that would look like and not knowing where to even start. This client was pretty unhappy in their job, but thought that the only way to be happy in life was then to have a happy job, like a, a job that was going to bring them all of that happiness mm-hmm. instead of searching for happiness outside of work or searching for like any kind of interests or passions that lie on the times when you're not working. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our work actually like ended up being less like career pathy and more around like, what else, what else is girl even liked? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and, and how that could be a part of her life and bring her that joy that she'd been missing out on. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think, and I don't know if it's societal or if it's just like a personality trait or whatever, but I feel like I also work with clients who, because we spend so much time at work, right? Like it does become so much a part of our focus. It could become so, it can become so much a part of our identity or where we derive our sense of worth and purpose. And so if it's not going well or as, or bringing us this sense of joy and fulfillment, then we can feel like we're failing or that all, all everything sucks. Um, and that they're like, we can get really lost in the, the narrative around that of like work is everything and like um and and all of my yeah all of my happiness and sources of success come from work and and i think that that the, what you're describing in the 
the shift that you did with your client and thinking about who she is outside of work and what they have outside of work that gives a sense of meaning and purpose and value is so important because like if like in any relationship, our relationship to our work or career, our relationship to our significant other, like we can't get everything from just one source. And that is such a setup for just disappointment and depression. <laughs> um, yeah, I know we've definitely talked about that, like in our relation, in our uh, infidelity episode with Carly King, um, we touched on that whole like Esther Perel idea about like, getting what you need from different sources and not just one person. And, and yeah, you're right. It totally goes, it, it totally makes sense here with, with your career. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't all have to be about the job. I think like for you and for me, it felt like it had to be. And like, maybe, maybe if I'd waited some time, maybe I could have figured out a to totally different path for myself that didn't mean going back to school. That didn't mean bringing me to where I am today, but I would have found that joy elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Like I, I have no, no doubt in my mind. Am, am I like not, not happy with where I am, but like, is there a doubt in my mind that I couldn't have figured it all out in a totally different way? No. Like mm -hmm. I think that it, it can go both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how do you, how do you think a person can know if, if it is the job that needs changing, like versus like maybe versus like a mindset change around um, work. I mean, if, if they're kind of like checking all those other boxes that we just mentioned, like if they are doing all those other things, right? Like they're, they're engaging in those other areas of their life and they're still not getting that. Mm -hmm that, uh, fulfillment or that sense of satisfaction, or they have absolutely zero time to do any of those things. Mm -hmm. They're burnt out. They can't access any other part of themselves because work is just taking it all out of them. That could also be a need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, yeah, both sides of that spectrum. <laughs> I, I agree with, I'm thinking about, um, like if you, if you're in therapy and like most of what you talk about is work, like that's really good information about like mm -hmm. how much space your, your work takes up in your life. But I've, I've definitely been in periods of my life and career where I've, I've been like, damn, I am depressed. And then I have time off from work and I'm like, oh no, no, no. I just hate my job. <laughs> and just that, that idea of like, we do spend so much time at work. And so if, if we are not essentially getting what, what we need from it, that it really does impact our overall well being. And like, and while that might be in some, in some circles, like might feel like it's a luxury to say, like, I, um, like my job is impacting my well being. And so I need to like think about, a different job, um, that is a really good indicator that something needs to shift within your job or within the way that you view your job or your relationship with your job. If you, if you feel like your mental health well being are like coming at a great cost, um, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and we're, we're a wellness podcast, right? So we're, we're going to talk about that. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna tell you to, to, to think about your well being in terms of the job you have and the job that you could have. Also, we both touched on these different points in our kind of like finding our job journey that were pretty, we were pretty down in the dumps. So I would love to know from you, like, what were some ways you took care of yourself mm -hmm. during that time? Because like, you didn't just wait until you created revive to kind of take that deep breath and, and enjoy some parts of life. Like how did you actually take care of yourself then? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like doing this podcast every week, like really illuminates for me that I have been through a lot of shit <laughs> throughout my career. One thing that has been really consistent for me is, um, the relationships that I've been able to cultivate within my workplace and, um, and, and sometimes like for better or worse, like definitely early on in my career and being young and lacking maturity in general, like the workplace relationships definitely added to 
the sense of like toxicity in like all we would do was bitch about how much we hated our job or like, you know, all of that stuff. And that didn't help. Um, but having, having a sense of community or just like feeling seen and understood with, with my like colleagues was helpful. I also, um, in our work, um, we have a supervisor, I guess, like in a more cor corporate sense, it would be ma a manager, um, where I, f I was able to kind of form a, a relationship with and, and utilize them for support and also mentorship. I feel like I've, I've even, even at, at the depths of, of feeling lost and like in the suck in my work, I feel like I've try to let myself see the bigger picture of like where I wanted to go. And so like, even when things were really bad, um, I feel like I still let myself, um, dream and imagine a different experience for myself and then talk about that with my, with my manager. And just like, these are things I'm really interested in. Like, how did you learn more about that? I, you know, and, and just still being a learner within my, experiences, even though I couldn't necessarily access like the practical part of applying those learnings, but like letting myself still have room to imagine that things could be different and then trying to gain some mentorship from, from like, from someone at, at these organizations that I was in. And that really helped because it felt supportive. It helped me cultivate hope. Um, and it helped keep me interested um, and, and like, like tapped into a sense of maybe not current fulfillment, but that there could be like the possibility for more. So it kept you, it really kept you like thinking about like what could be what kept your eye on the ball. <laughs> I, yes, kept, kept my eye on the ball for sure. <laughs> and I think, you know, within, within situations like, again, where I was feeling not quite so happy or like not quite like taken care of in my workplace. Like I really also tried to utilize it like as a relationship, like, okay, I'm, I'm putting in this, what I'm getting out that. So like I'm putting in my time, my energy, yes, they're in return, they're giving me a paycheck. Um, so kind of like seeing a bit of the transactional piece of it, but also um, realizing where I might not have been taking advantage of the full benefits. So like if there were opportunities for trainings that my job um, offered, I was going to take them. I was, you know, I think I felt like in a mix of like mm, rebellion of like, you're taking so much from me. Like, let me take back in, in parentheses, what, what you already like paying me essentially, but like mm -hmm. making sure I took advantage of my PTO, like any training opportunities, um, I took them like just to feel like I was getting, I was getting something out of this, um, was, was meaningful. And, and again, I've worked in smaller organizations, but in, in big corporate settings, like it's, it's, likely that you have access to like LinkedIn learning or, you know, just resources because you're tapped into a, an institution that or an organization that, that ha has these things that you might not even, that you have at your disposal that you might not even be taking advantage of. So like, I also was like, I'm just going to get as much out of this opportunity as I possibly can. Um, yeah. <laughs> so good. I mean, you're just like sticking it to the man. <laughs> And like, and just like this, so stupid, but that's what it felt like. And it made me feel yeah. good. Um, well, it, you did what you could. You felt really stuck at the time. And yeah, I mean, you felt rebellious doing it, but like it really was included in yeah. what you being offered. So like you were doing anything wrong. <laughs> what about you? I know you, you just shared like that. It was really tough. Like, how did you like mind your, yeah, I, I mean, I think like, obviously with our experiences being different and mine was more like I was lost and didn't have the career yet uh, that I wanted or didn't have to like think about the career change yet. I was in a position where I did have a lot of time. Um, I had a lot of time to think about these things. I was fortunate enough to be living at home with my parents and they didn't have, you know, kicked me out. And um, I was living there and I, 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 was privileged to like have the opportunity to think about this and to figure my shit out. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And as, as dreadful as it got, I still had those supports. Like I had my parents who, you know, were, were with me a hundred percent on whatever I decided to do. I had my boyfriend now husband who was really, really, you know, just like hugging me through it all where I felt when I felt so awful. Um, and on top of that, I was still accessing now looking back, I was still accessing those other passions of mine that at the time were like self-care e that I didn't like, I didn't even know what self-care was, but like <laughs> that were, uh, were sort of like self-care. Like I was working out, I was caring about my health and I kept that up as I continued to feel so chaotic and confused in this other part of my life. So that stayed steady, that stayed like consistent. Um, while everything else did not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. What you just shared, like while things were kind of in flux and there was kind of uncertainty and insecurity that there were things that, that felt um, consistent, secure, um, and, and that you can lean into habits, um, when everything else was kind of up in the air. I think that's important. Well, and I think like a lot of the times too, when somebody's making a career change, um, like in, in a position that you were in maybe Mm -hmm. where maybe all that they feel like they can do is rely on those supports at work because maybe work is all, all consuming. They don't have time to access all these things. Like I, like I was able to. So instead, maybe that way that they took care of themselves was just getting a good night's sleep. Maybe the way that they continued to take care of themselves was eating breakfast that uh, one morning or every day or get, making sure they took their lunch break. So like there are those little bite-sized self-care that you and I talk about all the time that are much more accessible maybe for that person that's in a career, mm, career like um, crisis mm-hmm. uh, that um, – where they don't have any time to do anything else. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and I, if I'm honest, like self-care for me was like not such a thing back then. Cause I didn't think I realized even what it was um, yeah. truly, but I think, I think you're right in that, like any, in any types of times of crisis, leaning on just the little things that we can still do is is so meaningful. And, and I think, you know, I shared this when we had our, um, kind of catch up episode at the beginning of 2024, like times in revives recent history, when I'm feeling like at a, at a state of career crisis, (laughs) of like, "Ah, I don't want to do this. Um, like just trying to, again, lean into what, what is there and the supports that we do have to, to carry us through to where we are, um, out of crisis enough, like crisis of mind, um, so that we can make like a, a rational, intentional next step. Um, mm-hmm. One thing, I, I don't know if this this kind of t- pivots us um, as we're nearing the end, but one one other thought I I kept having um, is this idea around whether it's changing jobs or, or changing careers, either way that I think another thing that stops people, you've, you've said this is, um, feeling like I don't, I don't know enough. I don't have any skills. And, and I think I've been thinking a lot about that as again, someone who has no skills as a business owner or has any business acumen, um, that, and then I like recently made the shift where I'm, you know, teaching graduate level classes and something I have never done before, have no training in. I don't, is there training for that? I don't know. Um, but like how, how quick I am and other people are to say, like, I don't know anything. I don't know anything about this. I've never done this before. And just so we go down the spiral and we forget what we do know, like, and we forget like all the things that we have learned, whether it's in our career or just in our life, our own experiences in getting us to this point in our life that probably relate to skills that we do have that are aligned to what it is that we want to do. We're called to certain things because they they must align with us somehow. And so I think that before you count yourself out for an opportunity because of what you feel you don't know enough about yet, like to give yourself some permission to 
to imagine or to look um, for evidence uh, to the contrary, because that's probably true. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said that. Uh, I think that happens a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, from personal and professional experience. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I love hearing about career journeys. Um, and I think, you know, as we've been talking about wishing you well in general, one thing that we've really loved is just hearing about the unique paths people take um, to get them to where they are, <laughs> this whatever state of being that they're currently in. So so you're definitely going to hear more um more stories um, like like this, um, or maybe not. Hopefully, not like this. Hopefully, really, really different from ours um, in the in the coming weeks and in the future of this podcast. Um, so stay tuned for that. And if you have a story around your career and getting to where you are currently that you think it would be interesting for us to know about, don't hesitate to share it with us um, via email at wishingyouwell at revivecfw.com. We love hearing from you. And we also love any guest suggestions, topic suggestions. You can email us as well for those. Um, you can also check us out on social media at wishingyouwellpod. And follow us on our, our kind of parent company, um, Instagram, at Revive CFW. You can follow Catherine at Catherine Van Eyck, me at Amy Albaro, LCSW. And uh, we will be back next week with more. But until then, we are wishing you well.